good day. Um, hope everybody is doing well and have already or are currently making their way through lesson one. Make sure to complete lesson one by the by the due date. That's really important so we can all stay on track. Of course, lesson one talked about um, national statistical data about how common um, drinking and driving is or drinking under the influence. And uh, after reading many of your discussion board postings, I see that folks are really getting into um, what are really surprising statistics sometimes about how common drinking and driving is or driving under the influence is nationally and within certain regional, or regional uh, geographic locations. We also looked at some of the hardcore drinking facts and research published by the Century Council. That's, that's really important information. It provides a really good foundation and big picture view of uh, what drinking and driving means and driving under the influence within society. And we also looked at North Carolina specific information as well. That's uh, not as detailed as some of the national data, but it's still still quite interesting. We we want to move on to lesson number two um, now, which is is really the process, the process of being charged with a, a DWI or DUI, and I, I'm kind of using those terms interchangeably, although I probably should not. DWI is driving while impaired and DUI is driving under the influence. Generally speaking, within law enforcement, DUI is, is the common terminology, driving under the influence. Because someone could be driving under the influence of alcohol, prescription medication, other types of medication, herbal remedies, or uh, other substances. So DUI is, is, tends to be the most common uh, terminology that, that we are using. Again, I hope for this goal is, or this lesson, our goal is to, to start talking about the arrest process. What happens when someone is actually arrested for DUI? And I have included a video that I produced for our Surrey County uh, uh, Alcohol Reduction uh, Federal Grant. There was called Project Connect the Dots, which you will learn more about later, um, with the Manor Police Department. It's about a 14-minute video that provides a reenactment of a typical arrest process for someone who has been pulled over for driving while well impaired. There is another video. This is a long-form documentary I, I produced, which is about 38 minutes long that takes someone from the, or, or citizens or the community, from being arrested through the entire court process. So there's a reenactment of an of a arrest, for example, some shots that we, we filmed within the Surrey County Jail, we talked with a local district court judge, our local district attorney for 17B, we talked with the insurance agents, um, we talked with a treatment provider um, in terms of the treatment process, plus we talked with a victim of a uh, alcohol-involved crash who unfortunately um, two of his children were killed um, during the accident. He, he was not the driver, he, re he was the victim. A drunk driver actually hit his car and um, uh, killed two of his children and severely wounded him and um, one of his other sons. And, and it's ex an extremely powerful message that I think um, that we need to learn from and listen to. Again, these two videos we produced about two years ago, but they're still holding up extremely well. They're being used statewide in, in multiple school systems. Um, in, in many school systems, they're part of the driving uh, driver's ed educational process. They're being used with DWI treatment providers across the state, especially down east. And, and we're really proud of the documentary. Uh, one of the questions we wanted to answer within the Surrey County community was, was the fact that they were, mo most citizens didn't understand 
the high stakes that were involved with driving while impaired. And many did not understand uh, um, the arrest process or the implications of being convicted um, of DUI. And we use these videos to, um, to kind of share that message. The videos themselves can actually be downloaded if you're interested uh, for personal use. I'll be happy to, to give instructions to folks on how to do that if, if you're interested. I also have a few DVDs left um, that we, we published um, that I, I can send folks if you're interested. In, in later lessons, we'll be looking at, at some additional uh, videos we produced uh, as recently as, as last October and as long ago as two years ago that I want to share with you that um, can, can give you a, a living, breathing example of our topic for this class. And that's what I really want to do, is give you living, breathing examples of this topic that you can relate to, give you real-world material that you can use with your clients, and, um, and, and that can be beneficial for your own self-improvement. I'm also including the actual legal statutes, the North Carolina General Statutes, that govern driving inside, in the, inside the state. Uh, these statutes can be a little bit dense, but I really want folks to read the uh, uh, through the legal process in terms of who is eligible for a driver's license, who is not, what type of legal standing law enforcement have um, in, in terms of probable cause to uh, pull someone over, to ask for a breathalyzer, to... Um, what it takes to revoke someone's driver's license in the state, and so forth. Uh, those of us in human services, when you begin to practice in the field, will see that driving while impaired is a, an extremely common charge for individuals who habitually are, are part of the, uh, the human services um, service delivery um, system. You will have clients, some poor during your professional existence, that have been charged. And it's extremely important to know what, what process they're going through. It's important for, for you to know the, the legal process and how to ask for help. And I will be sharing additional information related to, to treatment statutes uh, on down the road. So what I want you to look at in, in the general statutes I'm presenting today is how someone obtains a driver's license and how the driver's license can be revoked. Of course, in this state, uh, blowing a um, point oh eight in terms of a breathalyzer is is over the legal limit. Um, plus, we, law enforcement can also collect specimens via blood. Now, it's not only breathalyzer, but also via via blood. So your blood can be drawn and it can be sent to the state lab if there's enough probable cause. Also, something that you will learn that mo many folks don't know. Uh, within North Carolina is when you sign up for your license, when you fill the application out, and when you sign that document, you agree to submit to warrantless um, testing for alcohol. If the law enforcement office has an officer has enough prior calls, what that means is when an officer pulls over a citizen in, the, in this state and most states, to be honest and ask the citizen to submit to a breathalyzer or a drug test or a blood test. And if the citizen declines and refuses that test, that's the automatic revocation of your driver's license. Irregardless of guilt, it's automatic. So suppose someone um, is pulled over, the only has had maybe one beer five hours ago, and if they voluntarily blow in the breathalyzer, maybe their blood alcohol level might be 0 0.2. And they're under the legal limit, technically. But what if that same person declines the test? Well, if the person declines the test, their driver's license is automatically revoked, irregardless. Because when, when we sign the application form uh, for your driver's license, you agree to submit to, to testing. You will learn items like that if, if we take time to read 
through the general statute. So I encourage folks to do so. One of your discussion boards is asked later to ask me questions about what you read for further clarification. And hopefully folks will be asking me all types of questions based on what they read. And I'll be able to provide some clarification. And I'll either provide clarifications based on uh, a narrative text response, or if we have uh, some great questions, I will actually create another video that responds to these questions as we go along. Or I, I might do both. Uh, we'll see what types of questions come in. So again, I encourage folks to, to view the videos, to take a look at the material. There are some examples of someone blowing into a breathalyzer, multiple times actually. A, an example of blowing on the side of the street and inside the law enforcement office. Um, again, I uh, want to thank you for your attention to the class, for your level of interest, and um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.